All right, so this is our watercolor class day two. This is our reference for today. It is a hummingbird and a bunch of lavender flowers. So please take your pictures and then we'll slowly move on to the painting part. So I'll keep this up for a little bit more and away it goes. Let me know if you need it back. Okay, so you need a really big brush. I have quite a very large one. You don't need to make it so you don't need to have such a large brush, but the larger it is, the better because we are working bigger today. So I'm going to wet the whole surface and create a wash. So let me show you, I'm dipping it in the water, some clean water. And I'm just going to do a clear wash all across the paper. So here the paper will start to curl just a little bit. Let's okay, just press it down. Or if you have tape, use some tape. So I'm going to make the paper really glossy. And if I hold it up to the camera, you can see all of it is covered. So we're gonna wait for that to dry, not too much, but just for it to dampen. I'm just looking for a paper clip so I can hold the paper down. So here's a little binder clip. Usually I put it on the side, but it's curling a lot. So I'm going to put it right there. So it's still glossy, but there's some holes. So I'm going to go over that. Just make sure it's one, um, one same layer of water. So all of it is consistent. I'm gonna make the paper as damp as possible. Okay, now I'm just waiting for it to come more of a sheen rather than gloss. So I'm waiting for the really shiny part to go away just a little bit before we start adding the paint. So now we're going to start color mixing while we wait for the water. You will need, I just use a regular flat brush and we're going to make our first background color. So we have an example little, little sketch here. The background is kind of just a gray, gray tone. And to make gray, we're going to mix a bunch of colors. You just need some red. We we'll also need some blue to make a little bit of purple, purple, blue, indigo, and some yellow. If it becomes green, add more red. So just red, blue, and yellow. I'm gonna use some more water to dilute it down. It 
in watercolor, the most important step, I think, is probably the color mixing. Because if we put it on the page, just like this, it won't be very smooth. So we always mix the colors before we put it on the page. I'm going to make it a little bit more blue. It's quite dark right now, so I need more water. So this color, if you can't really see it on the camera, it's, I want it to be a gray purple, almost a little bit blue. It does not have to be this exact shade, as long as you have blue, yellow, and red in it. Okay. I'm going to grab my test paper, test swatch, and just do one test of this color. And that should be okay for the background. And we're also going to mix a second color. So I'm going to take this original color, move it to a second part. So I'm splitting this color into two. And for this one, we're going to add some yellow and also some red. So add some yellow. So that one's a little bit more of a green gray compared to this one. Make sure you really mix the pigment there's no little bits just floating around. Add some water. Back to my test swatch, I'm gonna test the color. And that's a pretty good gray. So these two will be our colors for the background. Essentially, we're making a greenish gray and a little bit of a reddish gray. So there's two different tones of gray. Just a very grayed down color. Okay, now look at our page. Is it still wet? Minus a little bit, it's still a little bit wet, but I'm going to cover up the stamp areas a little bit more. So making sure all of it is even, evenly covered in water, but not too much. Because you don't want it to drip down the side. This needs to be damp. This is just water. Okay. And if your paper looks like mine, it's a little bit shiny, but it's not runny, then you can start putting the color on. I'm going to go in with this red gray first. Load some onto my brush. You can use a smaller brush if you want. I'm just really just going to make a really light wash across the tops and the bottoms and everywhere. Also, I'm going to go with the green gray and a little bit in the middle. And if you see these waters, the water pooling, don't worry about it. Just let it sit and it will blend very well together eventually. 
still a little bit light. So I'm going to add a second layer of the purple, red, gray. You can just dab it on, just let it bleed. And I think that should be light enough. So I'm going to clean off my brush and then put this one aside. We won't be using the big one anymore. And we're going to just sit and wait for this to dry because as you can see, it's still very watery. Can't do much to it. So you can see it still it moves a little bit. So I'm just going to let it sit and let it soak. While we are waiting, we can prepare the other colors we'll need for the flowers and the leaves. So back to my brush, my smaller brush. We're going to make the purple for the lavender. So obviously we'll need some blue and I already have some here, but I'm going to make a little bit more. We need some blue and some red. A little bit more red. And until you get this magenta, almost purple color, then that's good. And add some water. And we're going to mix the second color, which is the leaf green for the leaves. And of course we'll need the green, but we also need some yellow and red. So green, and some yellow and some red, just a little bit of red and water. Okay, and because I'm a little bit impatient for this water to fully dry, I'm going to take my brush and just dry it. And I'm gonna do something that they call picking up the water. So my brush is dry, there's no paint on it. I'm just going to let it sit right on top of the water pool you see here. And let it soak up some of that water. And then wipe it on the paper towel. So I'm just dry brush, 
letting it pick up some of the water. You can also use a paper towel, but sometimes that leaves some marks. I'm just picking up some of the leftover water. And then drying it off on the towel. It's okay if there's little, little patterns on there because it will eventually all blend with the water as it dries. Anyways, let's add some blurry flowers, shall we? So you're going to take your brush clean it off. It can be any brush. You can use a round brush or a flat brush like me. And I'm just going to take the purple. And while the paper is still a little bit damp, as you can see, it's kind of shiny. I'm going to take the purple and add a few drops and just let it bleed, kind of like that. So we're, I'm also taking some red. I'm just going to just add it. Just apply here and there and let it gently radiate out. Right here as well. You can also add some water to it. This will create a backwash effect Mo most people don't like, but for this purpose, it is okay. So I'm just letting the color bloom into the wetness. So like in this example here, you can see how these flowers in the background look blurry because of this bloom technique that we're using. And we really have to do this when the paper is still a little bit wet. And once again, we don't want to add too much or too high because we want to leave some of that gray for the background. And there's also a bird that we have to paint. So we're going to leave some space for that as well. If you're not sure where to put these blurry flowers, mostly along the edge or the corners, should be good. And for fun, I'm going to try adding some orange flowers, even though lavenders are purple. So I'm going to make an orange by using red and yellow. Have some water. I'm going to test this out because I want to see if I could make it look like a sunset. And also a variation is good. Just adding just a few drops of orange. They can blend it with the purple as well.
Okay, and as we wait for this to dry, we can actually, um, we're going to experiment with drawing the flowers. So on a separate test paper, let's try making a few of these little lavender flowers. You'll need a round brush. So this is a size eight round tip brush. I'm going to take the purple. And how we're going to draw the flowers is actually quite simple. You're just going to take the tip and just every stroke is like a petal. You're just going to go down. And there's no pattern to it. You can do left, right, 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 left, left, right. And just switch it up. I'm gonna go down and that's one flower. Leave a little bit of, it's good to leave some white space in between. Cause if we just did it like this, there's no detail in that. So this could be, this one could be a, um, a further flower, the flower that's in the background. This one, because there's more detail, we can put these in the front. So let's just practice drawing some flowers. And I'm going to add some red as well. You can play around with the colors, change the colors. Now I'm going to go back to blue. So that's how we're going to make the flowers. So practice making some of these while we wait for it to dry. And one thing about watercolor is when the paint is still wet, the colors will usually look darker than they will be later. So right now, the sky does look a little bit gray, but when it dries, it becomes lighter because the water is no longer darkening the surface. So it's still a little bit wet. In the meantime, I will just practice making more of these flowers. You can also practice drawing the stems, which was something quite difficult for me. I will need a really thin brush for the stem. If you don't have a thin brush, that's okay. Um, you can kind of cheat it by, if you have a really large brush, take a few hairs, just grip some small hairs and then just drag it down. I'm going to use a very thin brush. This one's a size zero round brush. I'm going to practice drawing the leaves and the stem. Make sure it's not too wet, just a color, not too much water. So the stems are really, really thin. However, the leaves are not. So I'm going to switch back to my size eight round brush. And for the leaves, what you can do is you take a little bit of green with the bigger round brush. And kind of like calligraphy, you're going to start small, press down and let it lift. So there are some little leaves So this one will really practice your 
brush control. Try to just keep it in one stroke. So if we go back and try to edit it or change it, sometimes you make the leaf too big or you overwork the paint. So just one stroke of the brush. Practice on the task paper. My paper is still wet, so it's actually going to take a little while for it to dry. Another thing we can do while we wait for it to dry, maybe yours is already dry, but I'm going to wait for this one to dry a little bit more. We can also practice the bird. So in the image, there was this tiny hummingbird. And because today we're going to try and use only paint, no pencil. It'll be a little bit hard to do the bird. So I'm going to take, I'm just going to practice drawing the bird. What you'll need for the bird is you're trying to get this brown color. And to get brown, we can just use our background color and mix the two together. And to this one, to the gray green, I'm going to add some yellow. And red. Mix it really well, make sure there's not too much pigment floating around. It's just one consistent hue. Okay, I'm going to practice the bird. With the hummingbird, it is, I'm gonna put this aside, actually. So let's practice doing the bird. I'm going to start with the wing. And you, you already see that it's quite large. So good thing that we're practicing and this is not the actual painting. In one stroke, I've drawn the wing. And then starting from the tail, also one stroke for the body. So the wing is one stroke and then the body is another. And for the head, you can kind of just kind of draw it in. Just move the paint around. I'm not adding any new colors. The beak is really, really sharp. So just try your best to get the finest tip that you can. Make the belly a little bit larger, and that's just the basic bird sh shape. You can practice doing a bunch of those as well. You can also test what color you think your bird should be. It does not have to be brown. It can be whatever color you want. So here's my second bird. I'm going to do another one just for extra practice. I want to get the wing a little bit higher. I'm going to start down here. It's 
It's not quite the shape I was going for, but that's okay. So these are just birds for practice. You can do this on any other paper. Or you can just do it in your sketchbook if you're doing the original one in the sketchbook anyways. Just checking how dry it is and it's still a little bit it's got that sheen still reflective but the sides are mostly dry so i think we can start in a little bit Usually I have a blow dryer, the hair dryer, and just blow it dry. It makes it a lot faster. So you can just use paper and fan it dry. Okay, if your paper is dry and, or even just a little bit damp, then you can start the next step. So the next step is we're going to add in some of the background flowers. The ones that are not too blurry like these ones, but not too much in the foreground either. So it's going to be a little bit blurry. So that's why I waited until the paper is a little bit damp. So it's not entirely dry. However, if your paper is dry, it is okay too. So for the next step, I'm going to take the same purple for the flowers. And just like the pattern that we did here, I'm going to add a few flowers just in the foreground, in the background. Because my paper is damp, you'll kind of see what happens. It's still cauliflowering, so it's like blooming, but it's not blooming as much. So I'm gonna make it a little bit more purple actually. So add some blue. And that was too much. So add some red. And make sure it's not too dark. So the paint that we're mixing, make sure it's not so dark that you can't see the color. So thin it out and just add a few of these. And I'm using a round brush. Just let it taper off. You can go all the way to the bottom for this one. I'm not going to, I'm going to just leave it right there. I'm going to start another one. This one's going to, to the bottom. And you can also change the size. So this one's a small one and you can also make a really big one in the corner over here. For the really big ones, I'm going to make it quite light. You 
can change the direction of which it grows, if it goes sideways or if it curls. So add some variety to your flowers. And in the middle of it, you can also add other colors to it, well, like to the purple. So it's not just one uniform color. You want some of that different, different tones and different hues. That's how colors, how flowers are. So see, we're adding some red to make it a little bit more pink. You can also add some blue. However, I wouldn't add too much blue. You can see the blue is a little bit dark, so I'm going to pick up some of that paint. So I'm just, by picking up, I take the towel and then just use the brush hairs to pick up the water. Now I think I'm going to add a tiny one here for and this one's in two sections. Of course, for the flowers, we will also need the green stems. So I'm going to take my smallest brush now. This is my smallest zero round brush. And just like how we did the leaves over here, not the leaves, sorry, the stem. I'm gonna take the green. And actually for these ones, I'm going to add some purple to the green. So it's not too green. I want it to be kind of gray. And make sure the brush is not too wet because if it's too wet, the line becomes thick. So just the color on the brush and then wipe it off on the side. You can add a few stems. And just for technique, I just like to hold the pinky on the paper. So I'm kind of moving like this. Just so the lines not accidentally, I'm not pressing the brush into the paper too much and making it too wide. Sometimes that happens.
I'm going to add some water to the next one because I want to have a stem going all the way across the top, just like in the reference. So we don't just, it breaks up the image. So a really, really light green. I'm also going to have one on this side. It's really important to have not all of them go in the same direction. So most of the stems crisscross, so they overlap, create this X shape. Of course, not all of them do, but it gives, it makes the stems look much more balanced. And of course, the one last thing for the mid-ground are some leaves. So we'll need to use a larger round brush. If you don't have a round brush, you can also just use a square brush. This is my size eight round brush, dipping in the green, loading some of the pigment, and then dragging the water off. I'm just going to make some brush, brush strokes for the leaves.
And there's also some tiny leaves just on in the middles of these stems. And if you are using a flat angular brush, you can also make leaves and you're going to take the edge of the brush. You can go either up or down. It's a little bit harder to control. However, it still gives you the leaf shape. Okay, hopefully by now, most of our papers are dry. So you can tell just by looking at it, it's not shiny anymore. You can also touch it, the back of your hand. If it's damp or cold, then we can wait a little bit longer. If it feels room temperature and if it's warm, then that means it's completely dry. Because for the next step, we will be going in with our detailed flowers in the foreground. The ones that look like this. We're going to put a lot of them just sprinkled in the front. So we really need the paper to be dry. Okay, let's move on, shall we? So I'm going to take my large brown brush. Before we move on, I'm going to make some more of this purple. So I'm gonna take some water, the same colors I'll need, red and blue. <clears throat> I want more of a magenta red purple rather than an indigo. So I'm going to add a little bit more red. Add some water. And on a test 
sheet of paper. I'm just going to test out the color. And I think that should be good. <clears throat> All right, so with my round brush, you can also do this with any other brush, but rounder brush will make it the easiest to make the flower shape. So once again, we're just gonna go left, right, left, right. Make these tiny little petals and you can just start putting the paint down. And then the reference, I have two over here, but just put the flowers anywhere you want. And like before, you can also change the color halfway through the flower just to make it more interesting to look at. So there's one. I also want another one that's coming from the side. And maybe a tiny one, just right here. And give it a friend. Um, now I'm going to move on to this side. And I'm going to leave this space mostly empty because I want to put the bird there. If we cover it, then the stem is going to go through the bird or the flowers to go through the bird, which is okay. But for now, we're going to leave this empty and have the flowers go mostly on this side. Adding some red. Maybe I'll take some of this orange. Don't be afraid to make the flowers overlap. So let's say I have one down here. Make sure you always have some water on your brush because if we dip it into the paint directly, it's going to come out a little bit like acrylic and it's really thick. For watercolor, we would want to keep that paint washed down. So that's why I'm always dipping back into the water.
I'm going to add one in the white space over here, but this one's going to be a little bit more orange, orange, red. So you can just take the purple, add some yellow and red, some yellow and red to the purple. And water. I am going to add a flower right here. It's quite one of the largest flowers. I'm going to add a lot of water to this one because I want it to be a light, almost like it's peeking through. So I've added a lot of water. Now I'm going to make one of the biggest flowers. So taking one of my red, reddish purples, more pink hued, I'm going to add a flower right on top here. It's gonna look like it's floating right now because I haven't added the stem, which is because we want to leave the space for the bird first, and then we'll draw in the stem. Add another one over here just for variation in the heights.
Okay, and now we're going to move on to the bird, the hummingbird that is flying around in this area. So we'll need the brown that we used for the background. If you don't have it, the colors you'll need are blue, yellow, and red. And you just want to get to a gray, grayish tone. Maybe add a little bit more yellow. So it's brown, but the bird can be whatever color you want it to be. Does not have to be the exact same. So I am going into this sienna color. And remember how we did the birds in two, three strokes. So the wing is one brush stroke and the body and the tail is another. I'm going to do that here. Bird is not that big, it's about as big as maybe one of these flowers. So one of these flowers is how long the wing is going to be, but your bird can be whatever size. So I'm gonna start with the top wing. I think I might have made mine a little bit too high up. So I'm going to make the bird a little bit bigger, just on my side. And do the same thing with the tail. It's kind of this V shaped. I'm using a, I'm using a round brush. Here's the head. I think the head should have been a little bit longer on the side, but as long as it looks like a bird, then it is fine. And for the tail, you can just take your brush and add a few of these feathers that are sticking out at the bottom. Okay, we're going to let this first base coat dry before we add any details. And so while we're waiting for it to dry, you can actually go back to the flowers. And because the bird is now there, you can add the stem and just go around. We're going to take the smallest round brush get it in the green and draw one of the stems. 
imagine it going through the bird. Going back to my bigger round brush, I'm going to add some leaves. And of course, you'll also need to draw on the flower that the bird is actually eating from. So I'm going to do that right now. Going back to the purple, I'm going to start right here. I'm gonna put two. This one's a little bit more red. And maybe three. And I'm going to go back to the green and add some stems to these flowers. Actually, I'm going to go back in this area and just redo this one. Or actually, I'm just gonna go on top of it and add a flower. And just add flowers wherever you think there needs to be one. Put them wherever you want.
Okay, now that the bird is, it should be dry, we can add some details to it so it's not just one flat silhouette. So for the details, you're going, just going to need the same brown that you used for the base. You also need some black. If you don't have black, just mix red and green together. So I'm gonna make some black, green and red complementary colors. For this one, you don't want to add too much water because I find that with watercolor, it tends to be quite light. And we do want the details this time to be dark. So make sure your black is very pigmented. Something like this, and on the test watch, as you can see, it will be, it's still pretty light. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just take more black, try to darken it as best as we can. Okay, and with this black on the reference, I'm just gonna pull it back up a little bit. There's a wing. On the wing, there's some black and also on the tail. And that's the patterning. We're going to try and add that pattern to the bird. So just going along. So right now we're kind of drawing rather than painting. If it's too dark. Let's go back in. Also just add some water and let the color bloom. So now I'm going back with the red and some yellow to make kind of an orange brown. Also add some green to the tail. And you don't want to make it too much like you're trying, you're trying to draw with the paint. You just want to imply the color. So keep it to as little as few brush strokes as you can. So I don't want to go in there and do too many details. Just a swath of color. And there's a white space for the beard. For the... On the neck, it has a white scarf, so we're going to leave that area empty. The head is kind of green, kind of yellow.
And one thing you can do is you can also add some feathering to the under edge of this wing. What that is, I'm just going to wet the brush, make it damp, and bring some of that color in by feathering. It's just moving the brush, almost like you're sketching. Once again, you don't want to do too much details. So I'm going to stop right there for the bird. There's not too much detail to add any more to the bird. You can try adding an eye, but every time I add an eye, it looks a little bit scary. So you can, if you want, you can always do that and see how it looks this time. I think the problem is I didn't leave enough white space. But it is okay. I'm gonna go back with a dark, dark black. Go under the chin. And just dab some of that black color, mostly on the tail, the shoulder here, and also on the tail. But otherwise, this bird is mostly done, and we don't want to work too much on it. Oftentimes, we overwork the area, and it just becomes a little bit too messy. So we can just leave the bird as it is. Now, the next few steps are optional. You're basically done at this point, but for extra effects, and you can also do this for your other paintings, is you can take a very stiff brush. So mine, you can tell because the bristles, they bounce really quickly, or like a toothbrush. And you can see this, I tried to do this in the example here. There's a few tiny dots sprinkled everywhere. That's because I took the paintbrush and took one of these colors and just flicked some of that on here. It's almost like the pollen that's floating in the air right now. And be careful, you don't want too much, just some little sprinkles here and there. To add some texture. Just a few dots, not that much. It doesn't have to be purple. It can be yellow, it can be orange. Any of the warmer tones are good for the sprinkles.
So the bird is still a little bit wet. We're just gonna leave this area. And the next optional step is you don't have to do this, but I have an eraser, any regular eraser is fine. You can use the ones on the back of a pencil, use any eraser. And watercolor, you can actually erase the pigment. And with any paint, actually, you can get rid of the paint just by erasing. And I like to do this so that when I brighten up this area, it's almost like the sunlight is through the flower field. Notice how it's a little bit lighter than the rest. This, this step is optional. If you don't have an eraser, that is fine. I'm just going around the edges with the flower, mostly in the middle. and brightening up the background. Being really careful around the bird. And what this does for this painting is it makes it feel more crisp and clean. So before it was kind of smoky. Now it feels more like a morning, a morning, Stroll. It's just a very soft brush and dusting away the eraser. And you can, you should only do this when the paint is dry. If it's wet, then you'll just scratch the paper away. And especially down here, near the roots of the flowers. So we have more contrast and we can see the leaves a bit more clearly. And we are done. So that is our watercolor project for today. How did everyone do? Jenny, I think you can stop recording. Wow, very nice. Thank you, thank you. How did everyone do? This is very nice. <laughs> yeah, this is. Ah. Oh, I see the really good. Yeah, thank you for your time, you know, for your patience. <laughs> so, I see that, Sue Kang. Good job. Oh, my goodness. You guys, this one was very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hello. Teacher Jane. Uh -huh. Angela, I see that. Very wow. nice. Angela, Angela, I see that. Both Angelas, both of you. This is so nice. You know, I like the orange. That's nice. That's very nice. You are unmute. You are muted. I can't hear you. Lily, oh, I see all of them. These are really good. 
Yeah, I like it when the bird is a little bit smaller because if it's too big, it feels like crowded. Ah! So, I don't know how to mix the colors. No, That's it's okay. good. I it's missed the nice. first class. Did we have the did we have video on the first uh did we have the YouTube of the first class? Yes, it is uploaded. It's called a peony. So peony? Yeah, it should be it should be in the playlist. Okay, because yeah. I checked maybe last week because I missed the class, so I were trying oh, to Okay. Yeah. It it's there now. <laughs> okay. You're good. Thank you. Because I have a great weekend. <laughs> I know I'm not doing a good job, but anyway, I don't find the right pen. I think you're That's doing okay. a great job. The brushes yeah. are so difficult to control. Did you yes. get the Did you get the one from May? She has a uh, the thin one, the really thin one. I did, but that is yeah. I do. I do have. I bought four from her. Oh, you can try try to use that one. Yeah, I was using it for the for the little. I mean the stems. The oh, leaves. okay. But I I mean for the other ones. Yeah, Especially you can try. It's difficult. The wrong it's hard, part, yeah. They're all spread out. Yeah, try that one. Try that one for just use it for the entire thing, right? Except for the background. Try that. It's really skinny yeah. brush. The background, I couldn't control the color. So I just, what the heck? I just. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why I have the brownish color. I don't have the light colors. I like the orange. It looks different. I like that. Okay. Thank you. Anyway, yeah, I well, hope I time. hope you guys had a great class. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Teacher Jane. Hey, thank you very much. Okay, everyone. bye bye everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye -bye. Take bye. care. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.